What's today's plan? Hey, what's today's plan? Oh, we got two of you guys. Oh, somebody's jealous. Somebody's jealous. Right? He's always jealous. Okay. Today's plan. Uh, what do I want to do? I want to get all these door jams done. Get the little bit of body work I have left to do into these parts. Seam seal up this edge. Seam seal my floors. Get my e-brakes in. Uh, I'll probably pull this bash pad the top off again. Uh, I'll blast it. Clean it so I can get a nice coat of paint on there. And the same with the bottom. Or I don't know if I'll do that right away, but it's going to get paint that and the inner jams and the floor. Yeah, I think that's the plan for this video. Right? Right. <laughs> All right, let's get started. Well, we pretty much have everything all sanded. I just went around, got little pinholes and things like that. So we're just working on all those bits. I'm uh, kind of done for right now. Uh, I'm just letting that stuff dry. And then uh, I think what I'm gonna do is seam seal up this edge and the inside of the car after this. And uh, no, I think I'll probably work on the dash. 
I'll probably send, no, change my mind again. I'm gonna go back to seam sealing. I think that's what I'm gonna do for tonight. Gonna let this dry. I'm gonna sand this stuff up. It's very minor. It's just all little, tiny little imperfection stuff. Well, imperfection. <laughs> Things that would bother me or there's like bigger pinholes so we're doing that then i'm going to come back i'm going to sand that then i'm going to seam seal everything so it can sit for tonight and uh then we'll be back at it tomorrow where i probably will strip the dash or sand it or do something um I'm trying to think i got to think my stuff out my gauges and things so i got over there we'll have to have I got too many holes in the dash, so we'll try to work that out. Maybe I don't. Cigarette lighter? Headlight switch? What would the other two be? I don't have anything. So we might fill those. We'll weld those up. Then we can smooth that out. Yeah. Yeah, there's a couple holes I don't need. If I do a single cigarette, I don't even know if I really want a cigarette lighter in the middle of the dash. Headlight switch wouldn't bother me there. Then I have this one, which probably was the horn or the key in the day. We'll figure it out. Oh yeah, we gotta do the header. So we'll do the header and that. I know people asked about why these were there. <laughs> it's probably because in the day, it probably, uh, the headliner was probably sagging and somebody put beer bottle pop caps to hold it up. So anyways, we're gonna uh, go for supper and then when we come back, we'll, uh, finish this stuff up right boy All right. I didn't get around to getting that finished last night so I'm gonna finish sanding that up this morning quick and uh, it's actually pretty nice out so I think I'm gonna go grab my tea I want to I know I keep talking about it but I was gonna bring it in uh, I want to uh, get it ready to pull the motor out and I'm probably going to clean up this motor or a different motor. Just put a much milder motor in that car. But I won't be doing that in this round. But I am going to just get it in the shop. So before the next cold snap hits, then uh, I can at least have the motor here out and ready for the truck when it's when it's time. Anywho. Right? Is that a plan? That's a plan, right? Cool. Some warm weather. Gotta get her out. Uh, there she is. No flat tires, definite win. Well, this motor has a new choke, so with any luck, she'll start. Be a pumper. Oh, it's gonna go. It's gonna be a struggle to keep going.
Woo wee. All right. Well, since I painted the bottom, that stuff was a little stuck. One bad screw, actually two bad screws. But now we can get this section all painted up. I'm going to seam seal it. I didn't get around to it yesterday. I kind of got distracted. I was playing with the quad, trying to fix it. That didn't work. We have our panels out, so I'll be able to do the seal around the whole outside there before I clamp it down. We have our, basically our motor for our car here. I know I've stated this before. I don't know, people are going to like, why are you taking apart this car? It's almost, I shouldn't say almost, it's too much motor for this car. I used to really enjoy driving this car and I just kept hopping it up, hopping it up to the point that I didn't really want to drive it because it broke down a lot. <laughs> so I'm going to return it back to when I first built it and I think we put on like, man, tens of thousands of miles on that thing in its stock form. Uh, anyways, the uh, plan is, like I say, I got this motor and another small block. I'm just going to freshen them up throw it in there, just have mild cam. This thing is very, very aggressive, which is gonna be great for what I'm doing there. And I think that motor originally had a tunnel ram on it. Well, it wasn't a tunnel ram, it was one of those cross rams or something where the carburetors are side by side. So it's built up for that. The only thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, I wanna change the oil pump. Uh, I wanna put a high volume pump in it. And I think I'll just, I don't know if I even have to reseal it. Just basically that's all I wanna deal with. Pop the intake, put a different intake on, and good to go. Um, I'm going to take a milder stall, take that out, and I might change the gears too at some point. I got 373s, but this thing just zings down the road. With that combo, I think this thing for some reason spins like 35, 3600 RPM, so I want to bring that back down just because this is a, you know, it doesn't look like it, but this is like a super, super comfortable car. I could probably jump in here and drive the BC without a complaint whatsoever. Pretty much everybody that jumps or has driven this car has fallen in love with it. Hence why it's not for sale. <laughs> I could probably build a bazillion of these things and uh, sell them no problem. Anyways, that's... The motor's in here, that's what I'm gonna use. Transmission's good, I'm just gonna take stall, keep that, and uh, we'll just freshen it up with a much milder motor. The problem I kept having was a lot of vapor lock issues, we're boiling up the gas and stuff. I was gonna put a regulator on and run a return line. I think it's because it's such a closed hood, but it's only since I've been had these really aggressive motors in here that uh, that problem came. I've had mild cam motors and yeah, you could drive all day. It could be like 30 degrees out. This thing could sit and idle all day. It wouldn't overheat, do anything weird. And then uh, once you start getting a kind of an aggressive setup, it uh, started to become troublesome for me. So anyways, regardless, I got lots of other things to hot rod around. This thing was just a blast to drive. So I want to bring it back to that. Okay, so. I think I forgot what I was doing, but I'm gonna go pull out the seam sealer and I wanna seam seal up all the seams in here. And then uh, I think I'll come back later tonight. I'm going to sand smooth out the dash, figure out what I gotta do, fill whatever I don't want. And then uh, it can be ready for primer with the rest of the cab. And then I, I don't know if that'll happen tonight yet or not, maybe I wanna paint the floor get the floor painted or maybe I'll prime the cab first yes that's what I'll do I'll prime the cab first then we'll paint the floor but first step is seam sealing so let's get that happening
Well, I've uh, stripped the dash. Well, I shouldn't say stripped it. I've sanded it. I gotta still sand the inside of there. Uh, it needs more sanding, but I filled the holes to which most of them worked out pretty good. I just picked slugs out of my uh, iron worker and found everything that was the right size and was able to fill the hole. Granted, they're a little overly beefy than what I have in there, but the hole's filled nonetheless. Um, so I'm letting that dry, gonna sand that. I'll have to just sand down this upper part that has the window crank everything on it. But this doesn't need any body work or nothing like that. So I'll just get this sanded down so I can prime it at the same time that uh, we prime everything here. So I'm probably gonna go in for supper. I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna sand this, kind of finish up everything, give everything else like a rough sand. Cause I think uh, the next shot at everything here is gonna be uh, some primer. Get this thing in one color. That'd be kind of cool. And then, uh, I don't know if it'll be ready tonight yet. Probably not, probably go tomorrow. We're gonna get some paint down on the floor. That thing, get that thing all bolted in good. And uh, I guess we can start to get that thrown onto there. I have to make plugs for these after once I uh, uh, bolt the cab down. But what I'm gonna end up doing is I think I'm gonna print something that I can pop in and then take out just so it looks, looks nice. I could make something, but if I print it, it could be kind of like a press fit. Anywho. Uh, as I wait for this to dry, I'm gonna go for supper. What are we all done? We, I uh, sanded the firewall, didn't do that. I sanded past all the weird stuff. Like, uh, like I'm only priming what's bondoed, but 
I sanded a bit so we got some adhesion everywhere. I sprayed it with, uh, I know it's rattle can, but it's like an etching primer, so it's designed to go straight to bare steel. So that's what I was using. And uh, now I'm gonna use, cause I got some primer that I bought and it was whatever, it was on sale, but it's not really designed to go straight onto bare steel. But now that we got a base on, I can spray it over top of this. It's basically what we did to the box. Seems to be working okay over there. The box, the only thing I did there is I sprayed some red oxide primer on it. So when I do sand it, I'll be able to see all my boo-boos. Uh, if they're still red, I got a boo-boo somewhere I got to keep sanding. But, uh, yeah, I don't think there's much else to say. It's pretty self-explanatory. I'm going to be mixing up some primer now and uh, I'm using what I was using on the box. So it's whatever this was, which was on sale at the local body shop. So I think that's, I don't remember what it was. I think it was a hundred bucks for a mixed gallon. No, just over. I think it's four to one. At least that's how I mixed it. Seems to be okay. Time will tell. And I'm gonna stick it through my big, whatever this is. It's like basically a primer gun. It's got a big, uh, it's got a larger tip on the end of it, so. All right, it's pretty self-explanatory. I mixed that, or I've mixed this on the mixer already. So uh, I'm gonna mix four parts of this. I'm gonna mix four parts of this to one part of this in the gun. And we're gonna get two good heavy coats on there. Maybe more, time will tell. We'll see how far I get with one gun load, if that gets me two coats or three coats.
Well, there she is. One color. Kinda. It's, uh, I sprayed some red oxide primer over it, so when I'm sanding, any of these really obvious scratches are gonna, it'll uh, stick out like a sore thumb. I don't really have anything I can show as an example, but regardless, you must be able to see some scratches. Maybe not. There you go. See how that scratch? Well, it's gonna be red. If it's not red, if I keep sanding and it's still red, I gotta keep sanding. So stuff like that. It's just to make it really simple for a feller to uh, eyeball and see that you gotta keep sanding. So we got a little bit of dust, more or less just overspray and stuff. We just got one more session of making the shop dirty and dusty left. That's when we sand the box and this cab again. I have, at some point I'll have to do a little bit of body work when it comes down to it for this grill, but eh, that's, that's in a while from now. But anyways, we're gonna let the primer dry. The old uh, hospital bed worked nice for this painting because you could lower it down to paint the roof and then raise it back up to kind of do everything else a feller needed to do. So I did that, it's primed. I primed the dash. The other one I did with that edge primer, eh, it'll be fine because there's nothing, there's nothing really of any imperfections or anything in it, so that'll be fine. Anywho, that is probably about all I can do tonight till this fully dries. And then uh, we're gonna hit her tomorrow and get some paint on the floor. Paint on the floor and we're gonna get that midsection bolted in permanently and uh, we'll get uh, some sealer or whatever you want to call it on there. Some butyl tape around there to glue that thing into the car better. Anyways, until tomorrow. Well, I realize I never actually did do this yet. So, I am going to... Mm, I think this is probably going to be a good spot. I think I can go right here. This will go right on this body brace. Give me a lot of meat. Uh, when I yank it, yeah, that should work out. Then later I can make a boot for it. And uh, yeah, cause that'll be like right out of the way. All right, huh? let's chop this up. Should be pretty straightforward. I just gotta do a slit so this thing fits through underneath. I might put it off to a bit of an angle just so it has a decent pull from those other cables. Hmm. I might have to reevaluate that. Because if you look where my e-brakes are, they're gonna want to pull towards that angle. So maybe I will I'll place this thing back on and see if I can do it. This makes sense. Yeah, because it'll sit at the yay angle. Should be okay with whatever seat that I use. With my seat bottom, I should be fine. That sucker set will pretend that that's there. And. No, it'll be a little tight, but I think it'll be okay. I think it'll work. We'll try it out.
Now I definitely have a love hate with these drill taps. I love them, but I hate how easy they break. <laughs> uh, we had drilled and tapped this corner, it broke. Pretty much if you're lucky, the go-to is just get a punch and smash it into it. Like if you've gone through and you're starting to try to do the threads. I've just used a hammer and a punch and just smashed the tap. It usually blows apart and then you can kind of fix it up and go. Anywho, we got this thing in here. It'll do its thing. I don't have a bolt in the front. It's tapped into this cross member. I'll just zing like a big plate or a plate underneath there just to shim it off the floor, but we should be good. Uh, so that should be fine. We'll have to make a boot and stuff later, but we're kind of ready for uh, that we can get her on the get onto the floor here. I had to modify this because this was originally like was pedestaled up to sit about an inch up. So now I basically cut this plate off. I don't know if you can really see, but I cut the plate. I raised it, buzzed it back on. So now we're uh, we're in the money. We're good. All right. Well, I'm going to take that out now because whatever, it's set up for it. And now we'll kind of get a nice coat of paint on the floor. Just get that out of the way and done. And then uh, I guess we'll try to see if we can drop that cab back on there. Look at this sucker all as oh, one color. Hey boy, lots of snow out there, eh? Lots of snow. Look at you. Well, we still got a little bit of paint, enough to do some touch-ups. I still have another can, but that thing went pretty good. I was able to uh, do this whole chassis, the box, the underside, and the floor in this cab with that one. So we pretty much just have a coat. I'm not gonna do much more than that. It'll be fine. Cause I'm probably still gonna undercoat it or something like to uh, use some Rhino liner or something like that. But there's not a whole lot I can do right now until, uh, well, she needs about two days to dry fully. By tomorrow, it'll still be, it'll be dry, but it'll be kind of tacky, so, eh. 
Air drying takes a little while, not a biggie. Not a big deal. So we'll have to wait till tomorrow to be able to put all this stuff back in. Well, tomorrow, next day. This, uh, but I'm gonna just get this all screwed in and then we'll uh, drop the top down or drop this back onto the chassis. Um, I guess next round I'm going to, uh, I guess pull the motor, get it on a stand, do what I gotta do there. And uh, well, I'll put that one on a stand, I'll put that one on a stand. I don't want this thing to sit in here forever, so I'll probably pull this motor and then uh, I'll freshen that one up quick, slam it in. That way I can get this thing out and she'll be ready for spring. Uh, not sure if I'll do the gear change yet, we'll see. Because I should check this, oh no, that's an 88, so that's already got 373s. For some reason I thought that had a Camaro diff. I might wait on the diff because I might use these gears in the 54. I don't know what's in the 54, but there's a good chance it's got 273s or 308s or something like that, which is a much better gear for what I want out of this car. So we'll do that. But anyways, it's about all I can do now, except uh, watch some paint dry. So I guess uh, that's where I'm going to leave this one. So anyways, as always, folks, I want to thank you for watching. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.